What's going on guys? Patrick here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're located here in Longwood, Florida here at Window Tent Z, the location for the 2022 Tinter Battles. Today I'm joined here with Dean Mitchell, Mr. Expel, Mr. Big Shot, Mr. I don't know. I just, I just love shot. your vibe. Thank you. Um, this is the first time. Now we've been we knew of each other. We've yeah. known of each other. And we've actually been to dinners together with Expo Dinners and things of that nature for tin offs and stuff. Um, but we've never actually sat down and actually had a conversation. We have Which is crazy, right? But <laughs> After all these years. <laughs> right? I, I, it's like we're like, hi, hi, but you're busy, I'm busy. And then like we kind of move on from there. Um, just in case, in the event that maybe someone doesn't know you, why don't you, you know, Dean Mitchell, of course, just a, a quick recap of who you are, what you do, and things like that. Well, so my name is Dean Mitchell, obviously, as you just said. <laughs> uh, I work for Expel. I, was, I started with Expel in 2016 as a uh, uh, tint pattern designer and then moved into sales in 2019 and uh, been loving it ever since. I handle uh, New England, so I've got seven states. So uh, New York is not part of New England, but I've got six states that are part of New England plus New York. Plus so New I'm in the Northeast. Okay. Still live in Canada. Either cross-border thing and that's your territory for sales yeah got okay. seven states for sales of, of now month. i don't get the opportunity to speak I, I talk to a lot of tinners i talk to a lot of installers uh, but i never i don't talk to a lot of manufacturers on the sales end of, the, of that thing so i mean i i'm really looking forward to this conversation and again this is really a very loose format sure. we're just kind of talking here and there um now being at 2022 tinter battles you were here last year uh question i've been i've been curious and asking is how is this event and this turnout how is this compared to last year? Well, the number one thing that we notice is it's much cooler right now because we've actually got AC. I don't know if you remember last year. It was about 130 degrees last year. I didn't make last up. year, oh unfortunately. I, I kicked myself in the yeah. butt. It was right after. Yeah. But that's what I heard. I wasn't there, but I heard it was very warm. Very warm. It very was, warm. Yeah. We were about 150 people last year, if I remember. But uh, this year's the turnout is awesome. We're like, over 500 people are yeah, going to show up tomorrow. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's insane. It's, it's absolutely insane. insane. But yeah, the major difference is the, the climate right now is much <laughs> more bearable than it was last year. That's for sure. It's hard to it's hard to manage that many bodies and make sure that everyone's comfortable. And obviously, yeah. you, to run a successful event, you know, you, you, you need the proper facilities and things like that. Not, yeah. that. not that it wasn't the proper facility, but it's like... No, when you the do first the first one. one. Yeah, exactly. It was the first one. It was a great event. It was very well planned out. And obviously, you learn as you go. And it's been uh, the, other one, the other one was about six months ago. So obviously, they did their homework. Carlos and his team are putting something really phenomenal. Uh, it's, you know, as you can see outside with the tents and, and, and the catering. We've got Chick-fil-A out there just supplying us with all the chicken we need. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a big difference from last year. I, it's it's. I'm always so impressed in regards to whenever whenever stuff like Eric gets involved to, in, in things and Tintwiz gets involved in everything, it's always like above and beyond. Yeah. It's never like just enough, yeah. just enough. And oh, I yeah. feel like in the past before like Tintwiz like really popped up on the scene and I'm not trying to push or post Tintwiz, but like they're so like in your face, yeah. you know what I mean? And now I feel like a lot of other people are following suit, but before it was kind of like people kind of show up, people kind of see, they kind of do their thing and they yeah. kind of go from there. Yeah. Now, with uh, being a sales rep, are you are you flat auto everything, or do you or do you have a specific? We do everything. So uh, when you're in sales with Expel, you manage a, an entire territory with every product that we carry that our, okay. our dealers sell. So ceramic coatings, uh, architectural window film, automotive window film, and obviously paint protection film. Okay. And the software as well. Okay. And, uh, so we, yeah, we touch a little on everything. A little bit of a, a, yes. a one. Now, Expo really focuses on, on basically a one-stop shop, essentially. Would you yeah. agree? Yeah. So uh -huh. yeah, we well, I mean, no, we, we do have strictly tin shops, uh, strictly PPF shops. Not everybody does everything. Right. So what what we focus on is exclusivity, uh, meaning that if you, if you're going to carry uh, any kind of products that we uh, carry, you have to be 100% exclusive to what we sell. Okay. Meaning, if you're if you're a PPF tint and ceramic coating shop, we want you to carry all our products, and in return, we help you grow. We uh, your loyalty uh, turns into us being loyal to you and helping your business thrive. So we're going to make sure that we go above and beyond to keep marketing in your area to to push uh, retail traffic your way, and um, that's the advantage of being exclusive. Not only that, but I was a shop owner for 25 years as well, and and being exclusive. Uh, it means a lot to your customers, right? When you walk in, in a shop and the only the, the shop owner only carries one brand, it says a lot about what the shop owner believes in, right? It's like, uh, you, it's, we're not a flea market, basically, right? You don't have five different brands of film where the customer doesn't know what the owner believes in, so what's gonna go on my car, right? 
Right. It's, you, it's a little bombarding, a exactly. little o- so overbearing. If you're putting all your faith in one product, well, as a consumer, it, it, it shows a lot of confidence in what you're selling. Therefore, it's an easy sell, right? Right, absolutely. And just trying to upsell to higher products within that lot brand, it just makes it easier because you believe in what you're selling. So okay. the success of your business depends on that brand. So, you know, obviously, uh, it's no matter the brand, I find that, uh, you know, I've, I've visited shops, multiple shops over the years, and no matter the brand, I think it's it's very important to be exclusive for growth and for that trust that you create with, with your consumers. Okay. Very important. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Now, if you're now because the, the channel and the following that I that I, I, I associate with is a lot, I do a lot of trainings, a lot of tutorials, a lot of how tos. Uh, window tinting business is trying to like show how to get into the actual business. Um, you know, a lot of people focus on tint and but they want to diversify their business with other products, with other services. Well, what, are, what are some advice for some people that might have tint down but want to get into dabbling into other things? Because I feel like you can only you can only try to master one craft at a time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you said it right. We have a lot of shops that do tint only and want to get into PPF and vice versa. So the goal is that, you know, obviously you need to be staffed to do that, right? If you're a one man shop or you've got one employee, just trying to focus on, on, on PPF when you're a tent shop is a little hard. Uh, I always recommend uh, if you've got two, three employees to send one or two to training so that they, when they come back, uh, they can feed off of each other, right? Nobody learns the same way. Nobody learns at the same pace. So when you come back and you're able to feed off each other, maybe you do it a little bit differently, which will help me get through that learning curve a little quicker. Right. But to go back to your question, um, which was uh, how to um, advise shops that want to get into a certain, it's just, you have, to, you have to have the demand for it in the first place, right? You have to create that demand. And then when you do have that demand, it's just to, to push it within your, yourself to learn. You, there's YouTube nowadays. It's so much easier to learn right now than it was when I started, for example, when uh, cell phones weren't even a thing back in 93 when I started, right? So right, right. It was just coming out, so let alone the internet and, and Facebook and YouTube and all that. Now we've got guys like you that, that put a lot of videos up there and, and that are very educational and helps uh, guys that want to start at least get their, 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 their hands dirty with some product to see guys that got experience that, that share their knowledge. That's, that's a good way to start. And then if you, if you can get your hands on some products to practice and watch those videos, and if you think you've, you, you can handle it, then, then you schedule training. The brands that you, uh, that, that, that the good brands out there have great training um, platforms that they, not platform. Sorry, my my first language is French, right? So I gotta oh, okay. I, no, I, I gotta you, translate in my you're head. Totally before. <laughs> fine. You're totally fine. <laughs> but programs is the word I was looking programs. for. They have great training programs uh, to help their their shops become one stop shops. And one stop shops, obviously, uh, the the profits generated from not having your 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 consumers go to other shops to get other stuff done within the realm of, of ceramic coatings, PPF, and tint. Well, that's it's a no brainer at some point. Everybody just ends up di- diversifying. Shit, I said that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, you did. My English isn't that bad. No, but um, yeah. So, so are you fluent in French? Is that? I'm. My first language is French. Okay, yeah, okay. Born in Montreal and okay. uh, in Quebec, the French part of Canada. So okay, yeah. okay. So I learned English when I was nine years old, and I really started picking up uh, English, like become more natural to me. About six years ago, when I started working for Expel, my day to day just in English from from. Overnight, just moved over, and you got to like force yeah, yourself. Yeah, and I'm on the phone with with uh, people from all over. When I started sharing my my tin patterns, yeah, yeah, on Facebook, I got started getting a lot of calls, and then just my my daily life now is in English. So okay, and I'm on the road 12 to 14 days a month in the U.S. Right. So my English is getting better. Good. I mean, <laughs> it sounds pretty good to me. I Thank thought I much. thought you were fluent in that already. Yeah. We're good. I mean, well, you, you are fluent, but I mean, like, well, yeah, yeah. But it's, I do hesitate sometimes when I when I overthink it. It makes sense. Right? I yeah. mean, it makes sense. It's definitely yeah. hard. You know, yeah. French is a, a fluid, beautiful language. It's sometimes I feel like English is just so shy, like, <laughs> ah, like in your face and shop. Yeah, well, yeah, I just got to translate sometimes. It doesn't come out as naturally in French. If we'd be having this conversation in French. Smooth, flow, articulate. I can't complain. I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> now, uh, one of the things that, you know, that, uh, that uh, you see a lot of tin shops. Yeah. Right? So, what would you what would you say would be the main differenti- differences between a shop that kind of just gets by and a shop that's really crushing it? Maybe someone doesn't want to do PPF. Maybe someone doesn't want to do ceramic coatings. I don't know why they wouldn't, but let's just say. But like maybe they're on the lower end and they're trying to up their sales and up their uh, uh, upsells and, and everything else. Like that. I mean, what are the main differences between the successful successful shops and the shops that kind of just getting by but aren't really at that level yet? Yeah. 
Well, so what I've witnessed throughout uh, the years and, and all the shop owners and the tinners that I've met, particularly, is their openness to change. If you stay stuck in your old ways and you don't want to learn anything new and you're just comfortable hand cutting, for example, and using just basic films and not offering anything to your customers, you're just going to stay at that same level, right? And then uh, as you grow and, and you see the margins with different kind of tints, uh, tint, not tints, but tint, um, it's, it's easy to, to, to fall in that pattern of being lazy and just offering just, you know, I always, when I had my shop, the first question that I asked my customers is, why, why do you want tint on your car? You know, it's a stupid question, but let them tell you it's too hot in the car, right? And then they're going to say, well, uh, I've, got, I've got the perfect thing for, for you to, to be able to put up with the heat in the car, to block the heat from coming in the car. We've got ceramic films, and then you just wow them with that. And then, we, you know, as you grow as a shop owner, uh, you have to invest in, in, in yourself and your employees and in your, um, the kinds of materials you carry in your shop and the equipment you carry. Like I was the, the hand cutter for the longest longest time, right? And I was always argue that hand cutting was much better than plotters, blah blah blah. But boy, was I wrong, right? My my business started to grow when I got a plotter. It's as stupid as it may sound. We did a lot of wholesale in dealerships, right? So okay, just just being able to supply my guys with with pre cuts, uh, good pre cuts, uh, they were able to bang out a, a car or two more a day, right? They pick up, come come in the morning, grab their box of pre cuts, go to the dealership. And you know, an average tenant will take about between 10 to 15 minutes to hand cut a car. If you can, if you're doing eight cars a day and you can save 10, 15 minutes a car, multiply a by eight cars, you can fit in a ninth car and not work, not extend your hours. So, you know, to go back to your question, I, I just keep. Uh, I do the up. same exact thing. I but the difference between a, uh, it all depends on how you how you want to grow and how you. If you're doing this for beer money, for example, you're never going to grow, right? You got to expand your your, your, your vision. Uh, as a shop owner, and uh, you got to invest in yourself, in your marketing, and have a presentable shop. I mean, look at the shop right here where we're at today, Window oh, Z. I mean, you can eat off the floors. It's so marble, cool. I literally dropped a piece the... of beef jerky, and I picked it up and ate it. That's how clean it is. <laughs> and no, it's you, you got to wow your customers. When a consumer comes in here and they see this this kind of shop, and and it's clean, the first thing that I always do when I go to a shop and visit them is go to the bathroom. If their bathroom is spotless, it says a lot about how they run their business. Stupid as it may sound, okay, it's okay. true. And, and the rest will be clean. Their job, will be, they're going to put out nice work. Their window, their door panels are going to be wiped down. They're, you know, same thing with PPF. I mean, if you drop uh, slip solution on rims, they're going to be wiped off. Why? Because your bathroom's clean. As stupid right. as it may sound, right? Well, you so care. Only, yeah, you care about your business. You care about what you're doing, and you care about your your consumers. So that's that's how you grow. Caring about your consumers, your staff, your appearance. Uh, as, uh, physical as well as your shop, and yeah, that, that's that's the difference between a shop that'll never grow versus one that will. Is, okay. You know, okay. Appearance is, has a lot to do. Appearance, I think that's you know having not physical appearance. I mean, no, you, know, you can't control you know, that, yeah, right? It, but you know, a, a, a collared shirt or a polo shirt or maybe even just a. a a business shirt yeah. that's the, everyone's the same uniforms yeah, it's type like, things. Yeah, when you're presenting yourself in front of a new cu customer with a, your hats on backwards, you got ripped jeans and, and you got a cigarette on the end. It's, you know, you have to wow them is what I'm saying. The, the beauty of your shop has to reflect what you look like as well. So. Right, absolutely. And the word of mouth is key in this industry as you, you and I both know. So having people just say, well, I went to the shop, you could literally eat off the floor. The, I was well greeted. They have a professional staff. They're all clean cut. Boom, and the word of mouth, just boom, that, that's what happens. Do you think, I would say, as a blue collar industry, right? It's hard to find clean cut, right? A lot of people is, like tattoos, and yep. I mean, you know, it, it, could you have that appearance, but still be professional? 100%, okay. 100%. You can have tattoos in your face. It, it, it's not an appearance, I'm just talking about the way you're dressed, the way you present yourself. Conduct yourself, yeah. Conduct yourself. Uh, and the cleanliness of your shop. It doesn't matter what you look like physically, but how you present yourself is key. Okay. To, okay. to attract the consumer and the word of mouth around that consumer. I mean, it's important. I mean, it's yeah. super. That's me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. No worries. Um, oh, man, there's so many questions I want to ask you. So many things. It's like, you're like a wealth of knowledge. And it, really, truly. It's 28 years in the business, my friend. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. 25 years, your own shop. Yeah. And then you moved to Expo. Yeah, I sold in 2018 after 25 years of ownership and then uh, moved to Expel. Actually, I started working for Expel in 2016. They approached me uh, to ask if I would uh, be interested in, in fixing the tin patterns in the DAP. 
Expel DAP, which uh, nobody was using at the time because they were being designed by the PPF installers who weren't tinners. So they didn't know what to look out for specifically, like a tinner would. Right. Like those nice clean cut top edges and the, you know, the, the corner radiuses had to be really sharp. Just and, right. And, you know, no gaps on the sides and stuff like that. So uh, I spoke to the VP, Matt Morrow, who's actually a guy from Montreal as well, who was one of my business partners. Okay, okay. Uh, who ended up being a VP of Expel after he sold his dis distribution company in, in Canada. So I had a connection there already. So he uh, reaches out to me and um, uh, flies me over to Texas. I met with the design team, figured out what the process was. And then I came back home uh, super excited, talked to my partners. You know, we had a, a well-oiled machine. My shopping had been going on for, for like I said, 25 years. And uh, my partner's like, yeah, just, you know, let's do it. You know, you can step away from the shop. And so I would, I would design from, let's say, uh, seven o'clock in the morning to about three o'clock in the afternoon. And then from three, up until seven or eight, I would be at my shop tinning or helping my, my guys go to dealerships and stuff like that. So long hours in the beginning, which kind of burnt me. So then in 2018, I uh, approached my partners and I said, you know what, guys, um, I don't want to do the, the, we were tinting 65 cars a day, eight guys at my shop. Oh, I just, I was fed up with the volume. I was fed up of the, dealing with dealerships. Uh, right. right. Oh, yeah. Because you know, they're very demanding. Um, and so I, they said, yeah, no problem. Let's, uh, so I hopped on board, started designing in 2016, and then I started sharing my, uh, my uh, top edges, the, my designs on Facebook. And I didn't realize at the time that there was such a lack of, of good quality patterns because just when I started sharing that, people would just, my Instagram, not my Instagram, sorry, my messenger was, was overloaded with messages from people uh, asking what, what, what software is this? What, what, who are you? What, How what are you doing? doing this? Yeah. So then I just kept sharing those patterns and then people just started wanting it, asking for Expel. So that kind of put Expel on the map as far as Prime Window Film. And then, and then we just started getting subs uh, su subscriptions solely for tin patterns, which had never happened in, in over 20 years at Expel. Just know? for, just for DAP and not just, for, yeah, not for PPF patterns, but people who are now uh, signing on just for tin patterns. Okay. Right. Okay. So, which never happened. So it was, you know, it was, it was good. It was really good. <laughs> and uh, that's how, kind of how um, I, I, I got known in the industry just by sharing those patterns, and then started sharing my knowledge to my because, like I said in the beginning, we didn't have uh, Facebook back in the day, and everybody was to themselves, right? So being able to share that knowledge on a public platform. There's, there's, uh, there was a huge need for that Demand, uh, with up and coming sure. tenors that want to learn from guys that have 20 plus years of experience, right? And willing to learn, willing, oh, to, willing to, learn. to teach. I mean, willing to teach and willing to learn. I myself, uh, in all my travels, learn something new every day, and that's what I tell all the tenors that I meet. Keep an open mind in this in this uh, business, and you're going to grow. You, the day you think you know it all in tent or PPF, quit. Oh, you man. shouldn't be there anymore. You and me are pretty much the same person. I've been saying that for years. Yeah. It's like I work from with shops from time to time. Um, either trainings or consultings or anything or just going off and, and visiting friends and, and watching their trainers or, or watching their installers yeah. and there hasn't been a shop that I've gone to that I didn't walk away learning some, something exactly. anything just make it a little bit better and, yep. and sometimes you're like oh man I could be a lot better but then that you can pick and choose and that's another one of the good things about being able to travel is that you can pick and choose the great things about a shop exactly. and then just mold this mega shop those, yep. you know and that's exactly the knowledge I share now being in sales so going back to my story in 2016, uh, so I designed for three years, but Expel was sending me all over the plate, like all over the world basically, because they knew I could tint and, and I could train. So they sent me to China, they sent me to Europe, Mexico. That's I went amazing. to a whole bunch of places and um, share that knowledge. I was going to SEMA every year, going to International Wonder Film Conference, meeting all great guys like yourself and, and sharing that knowledge. And, and that led into them offering me a, uh, a sales position in the Northeast. So now when I visit shops, it's funny because all the knowledge that I grab from shop to shop, I'll share with. So, uh, you know, I, I, I believe that, that the experience that I've gained over the years has helped me become a successful rep with Expel. Just, I mean, I would definitely know. agree with that for sure. For sure. Um, if you, there was, oh my gosh, I had it right on the tip of my head, right at the tip. Love oh. the tattoo, by the way. Oh, <laughs> damn, that's awesome. Oh, the red dot. Did you see the the gold pendant that they're uh, yes, going to auction I off? Yes, I did. Oh did they God. auction it off already? It's tomorrow. I think they're doing that tomorrow. Are uh, they? Austin Cook from the Tint Institute. Yes, he's, he's coming down. Doing and, phenomenal uh, work. I think he's there. coming down, right? I haven't. I don't know. I think he said he was coming. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Austin is one of the few people, like influencer type people, that like I don't really talk to. Just, I mean, Austin's got all kinds of different he's stuff. He's so busy with his so trainings, trainings and 
schools and but he's yeah. such a great guy you, he is you have to talk to him he is oh no we've we've met in the oh, past. Okay, we've definitely good. met we've okay. definitely met i just we just like you know yeah. he's doing his thing and i'm doing my thing and i'm usually so busy trying to like this year at the tin off i don't even this will be the first year i go to the tin off in san antonio um that i probably am not going to be competing because i learned like last year was like I lose a lot of floor time because then I got I got to compete and I got to be off the floor. They got to be judging, and, and I found out like I need to be like in with everyone else. You know what I mean? Because that's yeah. a bigger part of like what I, when I first showed up, I was just sitting in cars and, and kind of going and leaving. But yeah. now it's a it's a little different ball game. It is, and you you can tell the proof's in the pudding. Look at all the people showing up to events like this. Why do you think they come? Because they camaraderie and knowledge right they want to see others tint like tomorrow is going to be more people because of the competition i want to see how patrick latin tints because i've never seen him tint maybe he's doing something different than i am which will help me grow right that's why these events like there's 500 people here it's ridiculous Most of them, 90 percent of the people coming here are tinners wanting they're not competing they're just here to attend a great event that, that they put together but also to learn from other shop owners and from other installers and pick up tips and tricks that they can bring back home and help them themselves grow professionally and, and, and install wise. So yeah, I am absolutely blown away because this, like this event in particular, like like the window tent conference, they doubled their pool, their prize pool. All of a sudden, they're trying to do like cooking competitions, another very familiar well, competitions, yeah. and so it, I think it. Uh, iron sharpens iron, right? If there's only one thing that everyone does and every year, like there's no motivation to keep your chops sharp and like motivate people to go and it kind of just gets stale, which I definitely feel like it was for sure. I mean, it was always good. It was good to meet the people and see everyone year yeah. after year. And some of these guys are, 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 are insane people at night, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's okay, right? Everyone gets yeah, up. We all and love they, to have fun, right? right? Exactly. We've got a tenor that doesn't like to have fun. <laughs> exactly. And that's the great thing about everyone here is because they are definitely professionals, you know, and they like to party and then they like to get down to business and, and, and get things taken care of. And, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think now more than ever the camaraderie is showing because of you know COVID uh, put a damper on everybody's lives and and especially where I'm from I and mean, you guys kind of had it easy compared to what we had in Canada where major lockdowns and people not even able to see each other for months on it for years and uh, when these events started to happen again and the travel travel ban was lifted and stuff like that it's it's now more important for us to get together a little more and. and and that physical uh, presence is just as good as what we see on Facebook, but it's worth traveling and, and actually meeting and touching and, and, and seeing and witnessing and all that in person than it is just, you know, staying at home lockdown. And right. So, no, there's COVID did uh, in these, you know, uh, COVID obviously, like I said, put a damper on things, but uh, it's good to see the guys like Carlos and uh, are putting events like this together. And to see that uh, International Window Film Conference is upping their game. And, and, and yes, you know, absolutely. like you said, it was kind of, I don't want to use the word, and please correct me because I'm French, but I was going to say stagnant, like meaning that it was, it's the same thing it's every kinda, year. Yeah, and it's, everyone and, shows up, it's but, the same thing. But the fact that they're upping the prize money and they're, uh, you know, they're kind of adjusting themselves to what's going on in the right. industry. Right, what people want to see. I believe now know. that they're following what's happening around, uh, you know, and one of those great examples of that is, is uh, Chris Collier. Collier? Uh, the, yeah, yes, yes. The wonderful magazine. Yes. Just, I think he's French. Is he really? Well, I think Collier. Col it's not yeah, Collier, right? Yeah, well, that's a French right? name, but I, I, I don't I'm know if assuming he's French. He's French. <laughs> I, I guess he might be French. So Collier not. is in French. It's the French word for necklace. So yeah, you're, you're oh, right. Okay, he's, okay. he's probably French. <laughs> but you, you can tell that they're they're wanting to get involved more and more, which is great yes. to see. We also have the uh, Window Form Revolution uh, family reunion in October. Okay. That's also gaining a lot of traction, and, and, and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an awesome event. Another great competition with wall, um, uh, cornhole competition. There's going to be, you know, the prize money is going to be good as well. Great prizes to, to be had, great auctions. It's going to be an awesome event as well. So Birdie told me that you and someone else are now in charge of Window yes. Film Revolution. Is that correct? Yes. That's accurate. Uh, myself and Dave Dillinger took so uh, Rick Tallman has uh, did a great job over the years making WFR what it is, right? And obviously he's he's got a shop and he's uh, got his website that he's working on and one man can't do it alone, right? So uh, right. he decided to step down from, from the Facebook page and just handle the back end of his website and uh, he's still there. You know, just to make sure that everything is, you know, and all the giveaways are. He's doing a great job with giveaways, by the way. We've got every week. We've There's got a, like awesome a ridiculous thousands amount of thousands of dollars every single <laughs> week that we're giving away. 
I mean, and the interaction is insane. And, and we want all these people to like, show up at our family reunion in, in October in, in Georgia. And it's going to be another great event. That's and, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't even know. I heard a, I heard a little rumor, and yeah. then I'm like, okay, yeah. okay. That's but Dave Dillinger and I took over, and uh, we're running the day-to-day operations of that's uh, amazing. wonderful revolutions. Do, yeah. you have, do, you see, do you have any, any forward plans? What do you want to do? Some well, visions you guys have? Any well, right changes now, you want to make? The, 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 the biggest thing we're working on, obviously, is our uh, family reunion in, in October in Georgia and the giveaways which was a lot of work because to coordinate all that is is insane but you know the the vision of WFR is just to to keep it what it is basically we want to we want it uh, to moderate it very uh, tightly because you and I both know what happens on on some Facebook pages where you ask a question and you get bullied with stupid answers and so uh, we do we have 13 moderators in the group and that's what we've been putting a focus on if you say anything stupid you're out this is a, a, a Facebook page for everybody to share their knowledge and not be afraid to ask questions. Even if they think it's a stupid question, if you ask it, it means you need to, she needs to, to learn. Get, you need to get an answer. So, and that's what we're focused on is, is keeping that moderation, keeping the professionalism in that group and, 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 and uh, making sure that our sponsors get the best uh, return on investment, right? I absolutely love that you said that. I'll be very honest with you. I was, I was, my my group window tinting business yep. it wasn't a group that i created because i wanted other i, need, I wanted another tint group i didn't even know tint groups were a thing mm-hmm. i just there's there's no place for the community to talk to each other on youtube so i created this facebook group so that the community yep. can talk to each other right so i didn't even know window tinting things were the, were the thing my issue my problem is that i was a part of a number of yeah. windows once i found out you yep. join all of them, right? Yep, exactly. The problem is, it was the Wild West. Yeah. You know, you, God forbid you say you say the wrong question or a greenhorn question, and people are like, yeah. off yourself and quit your business. And you're like, whoa. Like, and I'm a very big believer in like, listen, constructive criticisms. Like, I have I have a very strong no policy in regards. Like, I tell all my members to report anything that you don't see, and um, and it it's shouldn't be job. that way. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So. I, <laughs> I love that uh, WFR is going in that direction, and now that I know that, I, I wasn't a part of the group. I left the group because of it, yeah. I'll be honest with you, yeah. and a number of other groups. So yep. I'm, I plan on coming back now Good. that I know that information. Gladly have you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I it's a tough it. job, and putting a, putting a team of moderators that uh, that, ha- that, are, that are like-minded, right? And that's that's the key. I mean, uh, some things are said, and we when there's a comment that's said, it's brought up in the, in the group. It's, we call it the radar group for, for uh, WFR and it's brought in front of, of the, the committee and then we decide if what action we take when, when some stupid comment is made. Do we uh, put him on post approval? Do we boot him? Do we, you know, depending on what, what happens. And then we, you, you search these, you can type in their name and then see what kind of interaction they've had in the past months. And if they never say anything and all of a sudden they say something stupid. Or, and it's all nothing but negative stuff. Exactly. Or nothing at all. And then all of a sudden something stupid. Then you just, you like, don't need to be here, right? Yeah, right. You're not, you're not participating. Yeah. You're not joining. Yeah. You're not and being an active member of the group. Yeah, exactly. And that's how all other, uh, and most of them are, to be honest with you. Like Wonderful Pros is another, Patrick is doing an awesome job uh, with Wonderful Pros. I mean, and so are you with yours. And, uh. You know, there's, anyways, there's a lot more than there were back in the day, but now the, the key with these Facebook groups is to keep them moderated yes. and to get rid of the haters, right? Yes. And those haters, yes. going back to your initial question, you were asking me how, to, how, how does a one become successful in this business? Well, haters will never get su- become successful because they, have, they know it all and they think everybody that asks questions are, are stupid, so you're going to stay in your bubble your entire life and you're never going to grow. Got to be able and, to change. And, and that reflects on, on their comments in, on Facebook. So you know those types of people will never grow. Right, so yeah. it's 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 crazy. I, it, but I, I I do feel like it's it's better. Like more people are taking yes. over the helm. Where like not either taking over the helm or seeing that the the that the actual interactions and the potential that yeah. happens within the industry. Like I I feel like a lot of people live on the Facebook groups, and then like once a year, everyone shows up, and they're like, yeah. hey, yeah. And you're like, <laughs> oh, finally. Yeah. Like I meet people that I've been talking to for years and like I f- meet them face to face. I'm like, oh my God, this is so crazy. Yeah, and so these, weird. these haters have to come to these events because they're <laughs> going to stop hating, right? Because <laughs> right. we're all here for the same reason. There's enough work for everybody. There's enough brands. There's enough products for everybody. It's it's the fraternity and the community is now tighter than it ever was. And it's fun to see. It's really fun to see. Absolutely. Yeah. And, the, and again, we're talking about Austin Cook and uh, 
Uh, I started a charity called Tenors for a Cause uh, a few months ago with uh, Stephen Sala from Eastman. Okay. Uh, and that came about um, because of John Little. I don't know if you're familiar with the story, but John I, Little's wife. John Little's wife, yes. Yeah, she yes, had yes. a heart attack, and, and we all got together. Uh, he's a huge Lumar dealer, has been for probably 30 years, and when we found out that they were raising money, we all got involved, and that's the, really the first event that happened that re reunited the community. Uh, it was not a brand thing, it was an industry thing. And uh, we, Steve and I spoke at that first one, said so maybe one day we should start a charity. And um, lo and behold, we did two other events, and then Steve, Steve and I look at each other um, at one of the last ones for, uh, for Donnie Dixon oh, in yes, Houston. Yes. And we're like, yeah, let's let's get this done. So I came back home and I had a million ideas and came up with the name. And actually, uh, John Little was the one that uh, when we uh, there was a, there was a, a post on Facebook and he had he was the first one to use the words "tinners for a cause," which I kind of stole. So thank you, uh, John Little, for that. But <laughs> Thanks, John Little. I'm uh, man enough it. to admit it. But no, it, it's but um, yeah. So we started that and 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 the um, the feedback and and uh, the so what I'm looking for. Uh, <laughs> Help me out, I'm, I'm French, remember? <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, but the, not the feedback. The response. The respo thank there you. The response that we got from this and the amount of shops that started con uh, contacting me, wanting to hop on board. So what we did is uh, we're asking for uh, the, the, the proceeds of one tin job per month. And we're up to 70 shops right now as we stand. That's amazing. I think 71. I just uh, announced another one last week. 71 shops and I've got uh, nine brands, you know, from, from Eastman to Expel to uh, Solar FX, the cool view. Who's, who, who, uh, if someone wanted to sign up, how do you sign up? So uh, you reach out to either myself or, or Steven Sala, but, uh, and then I'll send you a link. Eric Devash uh, was kind enough to offer us his platform to subscribe. So what you do, I'll send you a TintWiz link where you uh, enter your company name and email and stuff like that. And every month you're gonna get a reminder to start donating. Unfortunately, the uh, nonprofit organization status is what we're working on, and it's taken much longer than I thought. Yes. But when it's uh, when it uh, when it, when we get that status, we'll be able to start uh, sending those emails for, for to remind people to start donating. But That's amazing. As we stand with the nine brands and the seventy shops, we'd be generating anywhere between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month the day that we get our NPO. Uh, and that that's at 70 shops. My goal is to start resting when I have 500 shops, when we, sorry, I say I, but when we have 500 shops on board and I need everybody to get involved in this because this is not a Dean Mitchell or a Stephen Sala thing. This is an industry. It's tinners for a cause. So it's every, and I say tinners, but it's installers. It's PPF. It's everything. People that and fall on hard times are about to lose everything. Exactly. And anything or. So if you've got one job a month and we, we ask for a minimum of $200 a month, uh, there's no contract. You can opt out at any time. And the reason we put a minimum is because, you know, the proceeds of one tin job, some people may give uh, $30 for one window, right? I mean, right. we wanted to set you a minimum. Specific. Yeah, so the minimum of 200 which will, like I said, with uh, and the brands, what the brands do, besides all their support, is they donate a product each month, and that product will be auctioned off on uh, any Facebook page, and the money uh, collected will go directly to Tinners for a Cause. So, but when we get to 500 shops, that's anywhere between 3 to $5 million a year. So can you imagine what we can do with that money? It's a lot it's of... It's insane. Even at $20,000 a month, we need to spend that money. So we're here in Florida. There's hurricanes every year, right? Yeah. Somebody forgets to renew their insurance. They lose their shop in a hurricane. They lose everything. We come down here get a, with a bunch of contractors, round them up, and do uh, 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 extreme makeover tin shop edition. Reno, right. Sponsored by Tinners for a Cause. It'll take, and we grab $200,000 from... from, from from Tennis for a Cause and rebuild the shop. And, you know, and we, we've seen, you've seen what we've done in the past with people that, that car accident, Derek Bodie in Tennessee, yes. uh, busted both his legs and his wife, uh, her foot and her, both her, uh, her wrists. And we went, we went in there and, and we rounded up a few tenors with uh, Jason Omoletsky as well. And we tinted, I don't know, 35 cars and, uh, Having tenors for a cause, the good thing about that is that we won't have to organize huge events where we need to tend 50 cars to give the owner fifteen to $20,000. We can turn around and dive. We will have those events nonetheless, right? We will go to their shop uh, and tend some cars, but we're already going to have a set amount that they're going to get. And, you already said, you're done. and we're going to keep giving until they're back on their feet and running their shop. We're not just going to give you money and then see you. Good luck. Just, no, it's here. You need 5000 a month for the next five months, for example, until you, you, you heal. We'll be here for you, right? Right. 
and that's our insurance. And where we see this going in the future is uh, getting with insurance companies. I was just gonna say, like yep. the problem, the, uh, 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 and I, I wanted you to finish, yep. but like a, a, a major problem is that most installers work for mom and pops, very few work for big organizations, yep. which means health insurance is very expensive. Very, especially is that the some, I got chills. Yep. Look, I got, for real, look, <laughs> yep, look, it's true. like, yep. that's real. That's the main goal. That's, with this. Okay, so that is a that's a, on the horizon. It is. You it, have it, to be part of the organization, you, have you to be pay part into of it, it. You pay into it. And but you're able to, gain access to yeah. affordable health care. Yeah. But you don't even have to to be a member of, of uh, we'll work the details later when- Because when you need buying power, you yeah. need everyone so involved. When we get to 500 shops, just do the math. Let's say every shop has two employees or three employees. That's a lot of people. And it's with volume- yeah. At worst? Yeah, at worst. So you, you approach an insurance company with 1,600 employees or, 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 or members, uh, you're gonna get great pricing, right? Exactly. You're gonna make uh, insurance affordable for every single installer in America, right? Oh God, I love that. So that, that that's the goal. Well, so. that's this is a conversation that's been had for the last five years. I've had, I've spoken to a number of different people, a number of different people that I didn't think are capable of, of the organization and, and being able to, to cultivate a project like mm -hmm. that and the, the, the gumption, I guess you could say, but I can definitely see you doing it for yeah. sure. Thank I, you. Thank you. Yes. But obviously I, I'll take all the help I can get. You guys are very knowledgeable oh, in all that stuff. Oh, I mean, absolutely. You know, I, we're open. At, this is, like I said, it's not a Dean Mitchell thing. It's not a Stephen no, Salah no, no, thing. No, it's yeah. not an, a brand thing. It's an industry thing. We all got to get together and make it happen. Right. We need all the help we can get. So. I know, I know. I, 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 there's one reason why uh, I'm, I've been with my wife for not my wife, we're still engaged, right? For 10 years, two babies, four states. Congrats. Oh, thank you, thank <laughs> you. We just just did our 10-year uh, anniversary last November. Congratulations. And uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, but one reason why we're not getting married is that we, I literally can't afford it. Because if we get married, my I have to cover another 15, it would cost me 18,000 more a year to keep the coverage they currently have. Wow. And I'm like, I love, I, I mean, I want them covered, but I also, I mean, I got bills to pay, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not a millionaire, I'm not. I, yeah, and you don't work for for a big corporate company that that has 500 employees that can afford cheap insurance, cheaper yes. insurance, right? Yeah. So you're affordable insurance, affordable at all, insurance. anything, exactly. Like, so I'm paying through the get, nose. Yeah, we'll create this this community of of, of tinners or PPF installers uh, that will come together and, and, and be able to. We'll have the buying power now, you know, to negotiate with, with insurance companies. Well, listen, I have, I I mean, I don't know, com communitively, I'm sure there's there's overlap and whatever, but there's 17,000 followers on YouTube. There's another oh. 14,000 in my group. I mean, even if there is overlap, I have we have at least 15,000 window tenders, specific window yeah. tenders, and I am 100% involved. Not involved, I mean, but like, I will completely endorse that idea because that's I just awesome. think it's definitely something that only improves the industry. Exactly, and you don't have to be uh, involved on a monthly basis. I mean, look at Jason Omoletsky, he's the best example. He uses his Instagram platform to auction off products. I mean, he raised $4,300 in four or five auctions. That's crazy. And, and yeah, he'll put, a, you know, he, he auctioned off like a cushion with a tenors for a cause and it, it, it sold for like 500 bucks. And he, you know, uh, I have the list of things that he sold, but I mean, it's insane. 4,300 bucks in four auctions. That's amazing. So you can use your platform, your notoriety, your community, any, uh, your customers. Any way you can, that I can help you with this, I, yeah, I, I'm appreciate it. definitely down for that. Yeah, definitely it, down it'll for benefit that. all of us in yes. the future, right? Yes, that's the whole um, point. Right? Yeah. Improve, inspire, inform, inspire, improve. That's the slogan that I've gone with for the longest time is inform, inspire, and improve, yeah. you know? And, and, and that, oh man. Yeah. Oh man, I don't want to take to up come. too much of a lot of your yeah. time. And uh, I know you're busy. I know you're here with your daughter. You, you, yeah, the whole family the came hotel. down. Yeah, my, my parents. She went back? She went back to the hotel. She's got some homework. So oh, she okay, figured, okay. and I'll go pick her up later for dinner. And mom and dad are still here? No, my parents uh, are in Port St. Lucie uh, for a couple months during the winter. Okay. And they just drove up to come and see me. And then they they, actually, they drove back down to Port St. Lucie. Excellent. Uh, yeah, Excellent. they're coming back home in April. So. Well, I, 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 uh, I just opened up a shop. I signed a lease yesterday. Here in uh, not I, I'm in Florida, so I was in the Tampa area, okay. mobile for the last two years. And, oh, you uh, signed a lease. I signed a lease to a shop in Hudson, which is about 45 minutes north. But my right. in-laws live it's in Spring Hill, and it's like, but like, um, so if you're ever in the area, like I have yeah. people that are like, oh, I want to come by, and I'm like, yo, I'm mobile, you guys. I'm, I mean, I've been I've been driving running mobile for two years, and it's like. During the summertime, it's 110 oh. in these garages. I'm dying, and it's like now you're gonna have your own shop. AC yeah, and well, and and I'm on the higher end of like I do I do uh, 380. My my prices are my entry is is 229. My my mid grade ceramics 389. My high performance is 549. Windshields 199, 299. Like I'll do Teslas for 1300, but like 
and I'm a mobile guy, you know, and no one trusts mobile guys, right? So yeah, it's like, yeah. but, but it's also, I close a lot of deals, but I don't close as much as I could because I feel like mobile tenders have a, a, a bad look and a bad rap sometimes. Depending on, yeah, exactly. It's That's why I have polos, I have my van is wrapped, and nice. you, you look up so the... Well, you, the, a good, another good example of a high-end mobile guy is Ma Martin Fowler. Uh, yes. You're familiar yes. with yes. Martin, yeah, right? Martin, one of my he, good friends. My exactly. Personal friend. Well, he's the same thing. He's, he charges up, you know, he's up premiums. there with the, yeah, premiums. And he, look at his setup, right? He's clean cut, nice clothes. You know, he looks super professional. He'll go to your house and tip your windows. So that, that says a lot, you know, and, and, and you did the same thing. Absolutely. And now you're opening up a shop and Martin's going to open up a shop. <laughs> right, so, right. You know, if there's... Yeah, it, it all depends on your vision, right? And right. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah, know if, you'll be successful. If you, you don't ever, for that, I'm if sure. you ever in the Hudson area or in the Tampa Bay area, let me know. Come, I come down to Florida for dinner. every year. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Feel free. Sure. Feel free. I mean, I, now I now I have a place that I can actually do. You know, I, uh, I've been working on doing uh, trainings. Like people always ask me for trainings, but like when you're mobile, I can't train you. You know what I mean? So like now I actually have a place that people can come up and show up. So you're more than welcome to come Appreciate to the shop. It. And uh, thank you. And, uh, and if you ever I, come to Canada. I don't be my guest. Ah, uh, it's so cold. <laughs> I have a strong like in the summer. I, I I only I don't travel north of the Mason Dixon line uh, <laughs> during the winter time. Like no. I went to Martinsville once no. in, in February. It like it'll cut you down. Yeah, well, don't come to Canada in February. <laughs> then. <laughs> you want to come uh, between June and end of September. Okay. Those the busy the season. Months. Yeah. The, the tail end of the busy well, season. Yeah, exactly. It'll be my vacation. Yeah. There you but go. It, I love it's it. It's nice and hot. It's like Florida weather. Uh, Perfect. In those months. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I hear a lot of people are in that like Montreal area. That's right? where I'm. At. That's where I'm at. Okay. Just a little uh, suburb of Montreal, about 20 minutes north. But yeah. Okay. It's a beautiful city. We got the Formula One Grand Prix in June, so if ever you want to come down. Oh man. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. I, in, June. in June. I've never June been. 12th. Formula the only one, that's thing is the you have to be fully vaccinated and you need to come to the border with a COVID test. Oh Actually, no, they're dropping the COVID test April 1st, but you have to be vaccinated. You realize I'm a Florida resident, right? You, do you know my governor? There you like go. So like, you can't come to Canada. We, we, were, <laughs> we were in lockdown for like six days and then we're like, yeah. back open. Yeah. Back. Man, <laughs> yeah, you guys had it going on here. Oh, yeah. man. Well, Dean, I really appreciate your time. We're about 40 minutes in, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know there's a lot of things going on. They're about to do the heat shrink competition in about two, so about 12 right. minutes. And I'm competing in that, too. So I really appreciate your time. Pleasure, Thank friend. you very my much pleasure. for being here. Yes, um, before we ha head off, I know you're associated with a lot of things. Um, if someone wants to find you or anything you're associated with, go ahead and look into that camera right there and let everyone know where they can find you. You can find me on Facebook, Dean Mitchell, or you can find me on Instagram at Dean underscore expel underscore Mitch. Uh, Mitchell, I don't even remember my own Instagram, but anyways, you'll you, you'll find me. But yeah, uh, Facebook is the best place for me, uh, uh, Dean Mitchell. So yeah, beautiful, thank beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dean, again, and thank you thank very you. much for watching, guys. If you if you guys like this content, uh, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you guys have any questions, concerns, shout outs, questions for me or Dean, uh, feel free to hit them up in the comments below. And uh, and I just appreciate you guys taking your time watching. And thank you again for being thank here. You. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, and we'll be uh, seeing you guys next time.